in this video we are going to start with the first type of taxpayer the normal registered taxpayer in this video we are going to focus on GSTR 1 2 3 and 9 we'll follow in the next videos we've seen that the tax collected by supplier from recipient has to be equal to the tax paid to the government and that has to be equal to the input tax credit claimed by the recipient this entire thing is checked by returns filed in GSTR 1 and 2. So as you would have guessed, they are returns filed by the recipient and the supplier. GSTR 1 is the return filed by the supplier who collects tax and pays to the government while GSTR 2 is filed by the recipient who pays tax to the supplier and claims input tax credit on the same. Therefore, GSTR 1 filed by supplier, it is called the statement of outward supplies, while GSTR 2 is filed by the recipient and it's called the statement of inward supply. It can be one and the same person because every business transaction has inputs and outputs. Just to make it simple, we'll categorize them as filed by supplier, filed by recipient. The person who's actually filing can be a single person, which is the case in majority of the situations. In order to simplify, we've done this bifurcation. Remember that statement of outward supply, GSTR1. That's what we are going to get into in this video. There are five broad categories that you can divide the details that GSTR1 requires from the supplier into. Again, this is for our understanding and this bifurcation has been created by us based on a reading of the return. It is not categories that the return specifies on its own. This is just to understand all the details in simple and easiest way. So the five broad categories are basic details, details of invoices or credit notes or debit notes. As you can guess, these are transaction level details. For each transaction, there will be an invoice and therefore it's details at granular transaction level. This is the first time that such details are asked in returns. But there's a good cause. The tracking, the compliance check is much more efficient at a granular level of check. The third category is details related to actual supply to consumer. This is at an overall level, not a transaction level. Fourth, details of different types of supplies that are made. And fifth is a general category of other information required. The basic details that GSTR 1 requires the taxpayer to fill. And remember, this will keep repeating in all types of returns. The basic details are the GSTIN and the name of business. These two will be auto-populated as soon as you log in because obviously the tax site has these informations ready. So your login is attached to the GSTIN and it will be auto-populated right as soon as you log in. GSTIN, name of business. Third, period of tax return. If you're filing for September or you're filing for a financial year, you'll have to mention the period of the tax return. Fourth, the aggregate turnover in previous financial year. This is a specific requirement of GSTR 1. The first three are common across all returns. That's all for the basic details. Next, details of invoice, credit note, debit note. That's transaction level. We can split these details that are required into details of invoices and details of credit or debit notes. Starting with details of invoices. The general invoice details, which would include invoice number, date of invoice, the gross value, as well as the taxable value and the HSN or SAC. The details based on supplies, that's the GSTIN of the recipient and the tax rate and amount, IGST, CGST and SGST. All of these informations will have to be filled in. What is HSN and SAC? Well, HSN is for goods while SAC is for services. HSN stands for Harmonized System of Nomenclature Code, which is used for classifying goods. 
each item that is ever sold or purchased in the entire country will have a unique code to identify that good it's called an hsn code the code is structured in such a way that the initial digits belong to a major category like clothes or something textile the next digits would identify specific things yarn cotton these are hypothetical examples but that's what hsn is for to classify goods and give them an identification number the same holds true for sac the services accounting code it is also used in similar manner for services and on screen you can see few examples of the numbering of the codes for each type of products as well as the sac numbering for each type of services moving on the return asks for details which are specifically based on supplies what are these it requires you to segregate intrastate supplies and interstate supplies that's very logical because they attract different types of taxes intrastate attracts cgst and sgst while interstate attracts igst in intrastate supply you will have to give out invoice level details of all transactions whether it's b2b or b2c while in interstate supplies you'll have to give out details of all b2b transactions and all b2c transactions which are above 2.5 lakhs in value that's what is meant by details based on supplies and when you're giving this detail you'll have to mention the place of supply only for interstate supplies the term used in return is place of supply only if it is different from the location of the recipient one more point that you'll have to remember all of these information will have to be split for supplies that are attracting normal taxes igst cgst and sgst paid by the supplier collected from the recipient and supplies which attract reverse charge so you have supplied an item the recipient has to pay tax directly to the government you'll have to split all the information for these two broad categories moving to the details related to credit and debit notes before we get into the details let's just get an overview of the concept accounting concept of credit and debit note a credit note is nothing but an intimation of crediting someone's account in your books of accounts so you have a ledger for somebody say a you will send a credit note to a stating that in your books of accounts you are passing a entry which credits the account of a while in debit note it's the opposite intimation of debiting someone's account in your books of accounts therefore if a credit note is issued by the seller that means the invoice amount has reduced in a seller's book the recipient's account will remain as a debit it's an asset he'll have to receive money from the recipient so if the seller is issuing a credit note to his recipient this only means that his asset has reduced he has to collect lesser amount from the recipient which is because the invoice amount has reduced if the credit note is issued by the buyer it would be the opposite case invoice amount has increased because in a buyer's book the seller would remain as a liability he has to pay money to the seller at some point of time so if he is crediting the seller's accounts that means that he'll have to pay more amount to the seller because invoice amount has increased that's the concept debit note you can guess if it's issued by seller it would imply that the invoice amount has increased if it's issued by the buyer invoice amount has reduced in short if you combine all of this you can say that a credit or a debit note is issued when there's a change in invoice amount therefore all credit notes and debit notes are linked to an original invoice a change in invoice would mean a change in tax and this has to be tracked by the government through returns that's why the return asks for details of 
credit and debit note it's linked with an original invoice so the information that you're required to give only if you've issued it as a supplier so in statement of outward supply you will definitely have to give the information if you have issued it as a supplier a document number the credit or debit note number the original invoice number the invoice to which this particular note is linked the differential amount that's nothing but the amount of the credit or the debit note the change that amount and the tax on such differential amount again as it was the case with invoice this information also has to be split for normal and reverse charge supplies and with that we've checked out the details of the second category credit and debit note as well as invoices the next three categories we'll check out the details in the next video